Hello, everyone. This is Bradley. Today, this is a continuation of a fundamental tutorial that I have done last time, uh, in which we have finished the preset to visualize the fourth. Uh, it's okay if you haven't watched that tutorial yet. Uh, today, this is just to use the visualizer to help understand the effect of fourth and some aspect of its animation. So let's start. So here's a kind of uh, renoded procedural setup uh, for part of my project that I have done last September. It's actually very simple. Just have a group of piano keys and you can use one fourth to actually lift up or drop down the keys. And there's another fourth to actually hitting all these buttons. Uh, and this is a procedural setup. It means you can actually instance all this kind of collection very easily. So you can instance as many as you want. Uh, and you can also scale them up and down. Uh, another very important thing, because this is a renoded setup, I just done that today morning. So if you take a look, so it includes a new feature that's about the parenting of objects, uh, like that I've done, I have discussed the last several tutorials talking about the parentings. So I used this new node, a preset node. So I have an empties and I can scale the entire collection up and down and move that away or even rotate, something like that, but uh, this is completely another story. Since we're going to talk about the fourth, so let's firstly turn on our visualizer. Uh, the visualizer essentially is just a subdivided plane, and uh, it uh, has a, um, I added the one vertex color layers, and in its shader, it's just uh, a vertex color linked to the emission. The base color actually does not really matter, but the emission is something very important and useful. And let's add our visualizer node, which is actually the vertex color transition loop. So if you put the fourth into the locations and just select our visualizer, and if we go to the, uh, it's actually, you can go to the preview mode or render view. It does not really matter. And uh, you can see the importance of actually turn on the uh, emission is because so that even in a very dark environment that I don't have any light, uh, I can still see the fourth very well. And here in the white area part is the, so the black is zero, white is one. And because this fourth is used to lift these objects. So in the area of one, which is the area of white, uh, all these objects will be lifted. And in the black area, all these objects will just stay at the, where they were. So let's firstly take a look with the, our spherical controller valve. And let's hide our piano keys. And I will put the visualizer into controller collection. Uh, by default, if you're calling up this object the controller valve node, the offset is 0 and the fourth width is 1. And what you can see here, is the fourth actually occupies our sphere perfectly by these default values. And by changing the offset, you can see, uh, so first let's turn down this fourth width. Uh, what you can see is that you get a very sharp fourth, a very sharp separation between white and black. And our white fourth is actually very jaggy. The reason is because the resolution of our um, visualizer is not high enough to show how spherical it is. So it only the jaggedness actually comes from the um, each polygons of our visualizer. So the 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 fourth is still perfectly spherical. So don't necessarily worry about that. What I would like to say, however is that if you're increasing the offset, it will expand or shrink your object. And if the fourth offset goes to be too negative, then you will get nothing left, okay? Uh, another thing is if you scale up and down of our controller, then you are also expanding and shrink your fourth. But uh, none of the scale for your fourth error none of the scale of your object and the offset value will change the sharpness of your fourth. However, the fourth width will actually change the sharpness. And you can decide whether it's fade in 
or fade out. One last thing that I would like to remind you before we head into directional fault. If I keep the um, everything into default value and then keep the our object into default value, uh, for the fault will occupy a perfect sphere as our empty. Uh, however, if I take this fault width to zero, then we don't have any fault. So just to remind you, there are circ some circumstances your setting can potentially kill your fault and exert and exert no effect at all um, in the scene. And let's head into the directional fault. Uh, in the directional fault, uh, you can see the um, it's actually very interesting. You don't have offset and you don't have fault width. But this is because um, the setting is more kind of built in into the uh, function already. So here, if you take a look with our lifter, if I simply just scale that up, you can see the it will automatically smooth this fade off. Uh, it will automatically smooth out our fault upon scaling. And if you still remember what you say, if the fault width is zero, then no matter how you scale up your fault, it will keep as sharp as it is. So this is one of the key difference. Another thing is for directional fault, at some point, you don't actually need a visualizer because um, the empty itself is enough to tell where is white and where is black, uh, black area. What you can see is the origin must be the value of one, but the end of four, uh, the end or the edge of our empty must be must be the end of uh, value of zero. So here it comes a question that does it means that our fourth visualizer is meaningless in terms of a um, directional controller fourth? The answer is actually no. Uh, the visualizer is still meaningful at some level because what if I would like to interpolate our fourth? Then let's take a look with the circular interpolation. And you can see the effect is actually very interesting. The gray area in between one and zero has been largely shrinked because this is what this form visualize uh, because this is what this interpolation looks like if you are not sure about this, uh, how interpolation looks like you sometimes just uh, take an interpolation input and uh, let's take a circular up and down and you just hit w and it goes to view so this is the interpolation viewer and you can see how it actually looks like so the zero will be continued more. There are a lot of value which are near zero and it exerts almost no effect. And it turns to be more tricky if you just change half of values and so on and so forth. And in such kind of circumstances, I would say visualize probably be more informative compared to a sphere itself because you have to imaginary cut this sphere into uh, one fourth to see, oh, where is actually the middle of my sphere? So that I know, oh, where is actually the gray area and so on so forth. I think it's actually too hard to actually um, concern with all that visualization. But anyway, you get a kind of idea. Last thing that I would like to discuss before, uh, before I close up for this tutorial is that the importance of this smoothness. So let's go back to our most initial example and the turn of the visualizer. Uh, the importance of smoothness is that if you imagine yourself you're really doing this animation like uh, goes to camera views initially we have nothing and I set a keyframes outside and then I set a keyframes after finish so now we get uh, a drop down of piano keys and imagine yourself uh, and uh, as you see And in such a case, what you can actually realize is the drop down of our piano keys is not driven by the keyframes of each keys. 
but rather determined by the value from 0 to 1 of the fourth. It means that if you don't have a gray area or you don't have the smoothness in the fourth, then it mean it, it will be like your the interval of these two keyframes will be super sharp like a uh, one second or actually one frame. But if you have the smoothness, it means two keyframes will be very far apart. So this is the difference. So what it means is uh, just, uh, for example, you shrink down this lifter. You can see this movement is very sharp. And in reality, this movement will be super fast that your eyes may not catch. So in other words, many times if you are doing a very serious animation with the fall, you probably would like to keep the smoothness quite high so that the movement won't be very, very sharp. Another very important thing about using the visualizer is that in certain kind of circumstances, for example, if I'm using a spherical fourth instead of directional fourth, uh, maybe because I want uh, a lifting up the keys and a drop down of the keys later. And in such a case, if I want the movement to be very smooth, then I have to keep the fourth width very large. So that now I have a very smooth lifting up and smooth going down. And let's keep the skill 101. And you can make the, the sigmoid curve. So it's something like wave action. I don't know what you can actually do with this, but anyway. This is just an example. However, what you can see right now is because this field of width is too high and it's expanding itself much beyond the empty. Even if I move these empty that, uh, that much away, I can still see the effect on the piano keys until I do not see this effect. And in such a kind of cases, if I'm going to keyframe that and uh, do a lot of settings, do a lot of changes, sometimes it's not very much known about how far away my empty should be so that it does not affect my object. In such kind of cases, I think the visualizer is very nice because you do see the grayish areas when you see them. So basically it means um, if your keys is in the back area, it means it's safe. It's insulated from the effect of our lifter. But uh, if it's in the gray areas, even if it's just a little bit, it means it's affected by the fourth and you have to move way further. Something like that. And this is basically... So that's why since the last September, I was always thinking, is there actually a way to visualize the fourth in a better way? Because the fourth width is actually very important. So basically, this is really all about it. Um, there are many other fourths that you can potentially visualize. Um, as I have discussed earlier in the last tutorial, there's many fourths that can't be visualized. For example, delay fourth, fade fourth. Um, and uh, index max of all, and probably many others. I don't want to discuss all of them. And but uh, there are some many other forms that can be potentially visualized. For example, spline forth. Spline forth is also a very interesting topic, but it follows basically the same principle. I probably won't really discuss that separately, or maybe I will. I don't know. I'm not sure yet. Uh, but one more thing I would like to discuss. Um, just to give you a hint that <coughs> the wiggle forth and the noise forth, they have an amplitude, for example, amplitude of 1 and amplitude of 1. It actually means the fourth value goes from zero, a negative 1 to a positive 1. And what you can actually see from this visualizer is that uh, just uh, probably plug this noise for V in. You can see a lot of kind of quality effect. 
but the, its amplitude goes from negative 1 to positive 1. However, our visualizer only shows a value of 0 to 1. So this is a very huge difference. It means it does not show the value which is below 0. So sometimes to better visualize it, you probably need to remap 4 and put the negative 1 to 1. So then you, now you can see actually it's, how its effect has been really exerted. Something like that. And if you try to interpolate that, I, I don't know, if you try to change the perlines or cubic, I, I don't know who, what, what you actually will do with this entire bullshit. It, but uh, um, this is actually kind of important if you really think about this kind of key difference. Because you are not watching a reading all the four sometimes using this visualizer. And uh, so on and so forth. I think uh, it's, it is it yet. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll probably see you next time. Bye bye.